Want to make grass like this? You've come to the right place. So first things first, you're going to want to make a few grass meshes. I've made two right here, one big and one small. Make sure each variant you make has can query, can collide, and can touch set to false and has anchored set to true. You also want to make sure its collision fidelity is set to box. Next you're going to want to insert a sphere, call it hitbox, set its size to 4.9 by 4.9 by 4.9, set can touch and maskless to true, set anchored, cast shadow, can query, and can collide to false, set its transparency to 1, and set its material to smooth plastic. Then you're going to want to put that part in replicated storage. Now you're going to open Roblox's tag editor plugin, and you're going to create two tags, a grass tag and a hitbox tag. The grass tag is for the grass, and the hitbox will be for the hitbox part we just made. So add your two grass meshes to the grass tag, but don't add the hitbox to the hitbox tag, we'll do that in our script. Now you should be good to go for that. You can place a patch of grass on some terrain for testing purposes. On to the scripting. Now I'm going to be explaining the code in blocks so you understand how it works, but pause if you want to copy it all down. So make a local script and start our player scripts, and open it. Now we're going to need the player service, the collection service for our tags, replicated storage for the hitbox, and the tween service for moving the grass. We want the script to wait until everything in replicated storage is actually replicated, and we can do that by checking if the game is loaded. If it hasn't, then we wait for it to load. Now we need some references for a few things. We need our hitbox object in replicated storage. We need a table for all of our grass vector 3 data we're going to need. We need a table to track the current meshes being touched. We need a table for all of our player event connections. And we need a table for all of our physics event connections. Now for each of our grass meshes, we're going to have a function called setupgrass to create a hitbox for them if they don't already have one. With the same properties as our regular hitbox, but the shape is a box, and its size and C-frame will be the size and C-frame of the grass mesh. It will then be parented under their corresponding mesh. Then in our data table, we want to set a key for the new hitbox and have its value be a table of its top point and its point it's going to pivot from. On top of the code setting the hitbox's C-frame, we want to reset the C-frame of the grass to a C-frame at its position, looking up at its top point. Now depending on how you made your mesh, the grass mesh might be tilted towards the side like this. To fix this, you need to multiply your C-frame by an angled C-frame to make it upright. My rotated C-frame was this, but yours might be different, so I would encourage you to get the C-frame yourself. Note that this angled C-frame is going to be rotated 90 degrees on whichever axis, so it shouldn't take long. Now for each current hitbox in the workspace, we want to have a function called setupHitbox which creates two touch connections, touched and touch ended. So when our hitbox touches the grass hitbox, if that mesh is not already touched by another hitbox, we want the grass to tilt away from where it was touched, and we want it to tilt at a certain angle. For the sake of this project, let's just make it 30 degrees. So we know that the length required to make a 30 degree angle is the length of the straight line divided by the square root of 3. So let's make a constant out of the square root of 3 and apply that to our direction length by taking its unit vector and multiplying that by the length needed for that part to tilt 30 degrees. For this case, it's the part's y size divided by the square root of 3. So now we have the position the mesh needs to tilt towards. And with this, we can calculate the new position the mesh part will be at. With these positions, we can construct the C-frame of the tilted grass mesh. Now to tween this, we're going to need a deeper tweening function to account for various situations. So this tween function is going to take in a name, the mesh part we're tweening, and its new C-frame. If the mesh is in the middle of a tween with the same name, we're going to destroy that tween, and then we're going to create a new one with the same name. Then we're going to play it, and make it so that when it finishes, it destroys on its own. For the tween info, I put these settings on it, you can configure these to how you like it, but I think this works fine. So now, back in our event connection, we can use our new function to tween the mesh. Then in our touch ended function, we can check if the touch part was grass and check if it was active. If it is, we remove the part from the active table and tween it back to its original C-frame. So we've got the initial setup, but not every grass instance or hitbox instance will be in the workspace whenever that code runs, so we need to set up a way for new incoming parts to be set up as well. For this, we'll use the collection services get instance added and get instance removed signals. For instance added, we can connect that to our corresponding setup functions, and for instance removed, we can connect anonymous functions. For the grass, we need to set its hitbox's can touch property to false. If it is active, we need to destroy its tween instance, set the mesh's C-frame back to its original C-frame, remove the grass data it has, and remove the part from the active tape. For the hitboxes, we need to disconnect and remove the touched connections it has, and then remove the key from the connection stable. Now for the players, we want to track when the players come and go and when they respawn. So when new players join the game, I'm going to connect a function to when their character is added. When their character is added, I'm going to clone our hitbox, 
and I'm then going to create a weld constraint between the hitbox and the humanoid root part. Now I'll set the hitbox's position to the humanoid root part's position and then parent that hitbox to the character. Then I'm going to give the hitbox tag to that hitbox part. When the character is removing, I'll just destroy that hitbox since we won't need it anymore. Both of these event connections are going to be inside my player connection stable. When a player is leaving, I can then disconnect the character added and character removing events and remove the key. Now I'm going to loop through all of the current players in the game, set up their events, and if they have a character that's already in the game, I'm going to set up their hitboxes for the grass as well. Almost done. If you play the game right now, you'll see that the grass is tweeing, but it might be twisting. We don't want that. To fix this, we need to set up a new up axis on our C frames. For me, my up axis is a vector created from the back normal ID, but it might be different depending on how your grass mesh was created. It's going to be one of the six vector normals, so it's not a hassle to figure out. Once you have your up axis, you need to go through your script and insert that axis as the third argument in every C frame by look at function. There's only three if you're following along with this tutorial. So once you've inserted those, you should be good to go. And now you have nice looking grass that also moves with physics characters. I might make another video on optimization strategies with this depending on how this video does, so drop a like and comment if you want that as well. Also, if you want to be able to come up with scripts like this on your own, I'm making a Roblox scripting tutorial series just for that. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.